Hey, welcome to Hacking Self Storage. So today I'm really excited because we get to talk about Beverly. Um, I get so many questions about people asking, how well is Beverly doing, the information, um, the turnover, the profitability, the expenses. And so in this podcast, I'm going to go through all those sexy figures. I find them sexy because ultimately figures is what makes a business profitable or not. So yeah, I dive deep into figures. Okay, so Beverly was established in 2012. Long story short is how I got into self stories. I don't know if I've ever told this story on the podcast, but um, I was on honeymoon in 2012. I just sold my betting shop for £345,000. Um, I knew that everybody was going to go on the mobile phones betting. And um, the reason why I knew that is because my football team at the time, the, every single season we pick a pub and it has to be to go pick a pub on a Sunday to go after the game. This is when I was playing, you know, in 2012 when I was single. Um, well, before 2012, Jesus, it was a long, long time before 2012. But um, yeah, we used to pick a pub um, and we used to sit in there after the game on a Sunday and have a few drinks. But the pub had to be next to a betting shop because we, we loved the bet. We loved to go in there, have a bet on the football, have a bet on the horses, come back to the pub, have a beer, go back to there. We loved it. It was a great Sunday tradition. But as times changed, people started betting on the mobile phones. And I thought, hang about a minute, this culture here is changing. So for the first year, in whatever year it was, when I sold the betting shop, um, the year before, we didn't pick a pub because of the location of a betting shop. We just picked a pub and the rest of it didn't matter. And then I got worried. I got scared thinking, oh my God, if this is what my team is doing, this is what everybody is eventually going to do. And so it doesn't matter um, about the pub, uh, the, the betting shop anymore. People aren't going to go in the betting shops as much. So um, I could see the culture changing and therefore I put my betting shop up for sale uh, because I realized I've, I've got two choices. I have a go online or I put the betting shop up for sale. And so we put the betting shop up for sale and we got three, four, five from Corals. To be honest, we did have other people interested. But nobody um, offered a price like Corals. I think we got 175,000 or something was the next, the next price. Uh, so we did really, really well to get 345. I did tell Corals a little um, white lie. I did tell them that we got offered um, more from one of their competitors. It's, it's a big four because it's big, the, there was a big four in the bet, bookmaking terms. And I said, look, I'm sorry that somebody else has offered more, but I love the way Corals go about it. I love the fact that um, I just, I feel connected to Corals or some rubbish. Um, I said, can, can, you, can you better it? And he went away and said, look, the best we can do is three, four, five. And so luckily we got, we got, we got, yeah, we, we incre he increased his offer from 325 to 345. And so that's how I originally had my money to start my self storage career. And so when we, me and Claire went to on honeymoon, I didn't know what to do. I was still unemployed, not unemployed. I had like, you know, over a quarter of a million pounds in the bank. And so I didn't, and I was only young. So I didn't really know what to do with myself, with money. Went on honeymoon to America in 2012. Yeah, it was 2012. And I forgot my driving license. And so that means that because we was going to draw, drive quite a big distance in America. And that means that Claire meant that meant that Claire had to um, drive. And so all I was doing was playing Tiger Woods golf in this massive big RV that we rented. And she was driving. She was in a bit of a mood with me. I was in a bit of a mood. She was in a massive mood with me. But on the side of a road, all I kept seeing was self-storage facilities, self-storage facilities, self-storage facilities. So it sounds crazy, but if I wouldn't have forgot my driving license, there is a distinct possibility that I'd have been, obviously I'd have been driving and therefore I might not have noticed all the self-storage facilities on the side of a road. So if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have forgot it, who knows where it would have been? We probably maybe wouldn't have been doing this podcast. Um, and so I started looking for self-storage in Beverly, saw there was no self-storage facilities in Beverly and just opened up, just because I think that people want everything to be perfect before opening up. They want all the lights to be green. And unfortunately, lights are never going to be green. I've always been a take action kind of guy. I'm going to learn on the way. I'm going to make mistakes. I don't know anything about it. But do you know what? I'm going to open. I know there's a market for it. And we'll see what happens. I didn't know anything about it. When we first opened, I was charging a ridiculously cheap amount. It was it was crazy what we was charging. Um, when we was full one year, I think it was like £60,000 we was turning over. And now I've just looked at the figures. Last year, 2021, we've got less units filled because obviously you learn as you go on. We've got less units filled. This is probably six years ago. We was turning over £60,000, £66,000, I think it was. Um, so we've got less units filled now than we did six years ago, but we're turning over £152,782. That's what we turned over last year. So that is a significant increase 
to what we used to only because we knew revenue management. So anyway, let's talk about the Bevel figures. I'm just seeing 152,782 divided by 12. That means we was averaging taking £12,731 um, every single month. Um, at the minute, we're taking more than that, again, because of revenue management, but we're only around about 79% full, somewhere around there. We're not... We, we, aren't, we aren't high on the occupancy level, but we are taking more money this year than last year. Again, because we know how to correctly charge people. We do, um, we do price increases um, and we do dynamic prices. So when we've got less of a certain size and we increase the price, if somebody wants it, then, then they've got to pay a premium. Okay, so let's get right into the figures then. So last year, we took £152,782.72. pence. That was from, um, that was from January... 2001 to December 2001. Now, a big thing, a big factor that people miss out on is the amount of insurance um, that we charge. Um, we're taking, here we go, £21,772 on insurance. That's how much we're taking, £21,772. I can tell you that we net 20, over £20,000 with insurance cover at Beverly. So if you're not, and it's, there's only 87 units, there's only 87 units at Beverly, and we're netting over £20,000. At Willoughby, we've got over 300 units, and, well, I don't actually know how many units we've got, to be honest, um, and we're netting over £100,000 at Willoughby. It is bonkers. If you aren't charging insurance, then you are leaving money on the table. But not only that, if anything does go wrong, then you are not doing the best by your customers, because then your customers' goods could be damaged, and they can't be replaced because they haven't got the insurance policy in place. So charging insurance, just because we make a hell of a lot of money from it, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing for the customer. And it's a it's a brilliant thing for us as well. So £21,772.79. That's how much we took. Just making sure I'm double checking. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, that's January. Um, that's how uh, that's how much we took. Oh, actually, I tell a lie. Sorry. Oh, oh, I'm doing something wrong here. Right, so we actually took, it's not 20, it's 20,102 pounds. I put I put 13 months in there. So it's 20,102 pounds. So it's just over um, 19,000 pounds that we that we net. It's 19,500, 19, somewhere on there because the insurance policy at Beverly isn't, doesn't cost more than 500 quid. I can't, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's a very, very small amount, um, especially compared to, it's a group insurance now um, across all three sites that we've got live at the minute. Right, my running costs at Beverly last year was 18,000 pound rent. 18,000 pound rent. I thought that was too expensive, by the way. Um, it was actually less than that. Um, but towards the end, uh, that's that's what we agreed, £18,000. So it's probably just a, bit, a little bit less. But for the purpose of this, we'll set £18,000 because this is what it's going to cost going forward every single every single year. Um, so £18,000 rent and £6,000 rates. That's all paid rates, £6,000. Um, so in total, it's £24,000. But what I do there, because every now and again, um, we don't have any water. We have very, very little electric because everything's... It's a manless site. We don't nobody working in the office, and all we've got is security lighting, security LED lighting. So the electric's cheapest chips. There's no there's no water because there's no water on site, um, and so I just put down miscellaneous all the time. Six thousand pound. That that's what I I work out. So it's thirty thousand pound in total expenses. So we've got thirty thousand pound expenses, and we're taking one hundred and fifty two thousand pound, nearly one hundred and fifty three thousand pound. So we're netting over one hundred and twenty thousand pound from Beverly. And the great thing about Beverly is that once it's a mature site, because we've only got 87 units, we don't get many quotes, we don't get many move-ins, we don't get many move-outs because we've been established, we're a mature facility. So a lot of our customers now, this is, this is why self-storage is such a fantastic business model because the longer you go on, the more of, of long-term customers that you attract, that you attract along the way. And now because we've been open nearly 10 years, at Beverly, we've attracted a lot of long-term clients, a lot of long-term customers. And so they don't move in, they don't move out, they don't, they don't cost you any extra in time. And it's just very, very simple to run. We, I was talking to the team and we reckon that we spend two hours a week on Beverly, just calling people back, just chasing people if there's been a bounce direct debit. Again, because of long-term customers, a lot of people, do. we never have any bad debt at Beverly. So it's two hours maximum of just calling people back. Um, that's all we spend. It's, it's an incredible, fantastic site. 
And that, my friends, is why I love self-storage. I love self-storage because it just gets easier as time goes on. The more mature you say it becomes, the, the less time that you need to run it because there will be less move-ins and move-outs. Your um, chain rate goes down. Our chain rate at Beverly is absolutely fantastic. And we've still got units available now because we correctly manage um, the revenue management side. So for me, I believe that a lot of people overlook the container sites. And as I said on Wednesday, I, I, I don't believe we should do. I believe container sites are definitely a way into self-storage for people who want to start their own self-storage company. As you can see, after 10 years, uh, netting over, this, this year, I think it'll net £140,000 just based on January, February, and March figures. I reckon it'll net, net £140,000. Next year, it'll net over £150,000. Um, and it's, I don't know what else to say. It's just a fantastic business, fantastic business model. All that is excluding VAT as well. Um, I nearly sold it, by the way, um, a few years ago to my friends. When we first started opening up, um, I nearly sold it for, was it £500,000? I nearly sold it for uh, to, to a couple of friends of mine who wanted to get in self-storage. And I needed the money then because of Willoughby, because of how much um, the expenses of Willoughby were. And I'm so glad, and I'm so glad that I persisted because when you first open up a self-storage facility, it is tough because of the money that you have to spend. Um, by the way, it cost me, I wonder if I can actually tell you exactly um, I've got a sheet. I'm going to, it's called the one pager. I should have actually got this out, but I've only just, I've only just thought about sharing it with you. Um, I can tell you exactly how much it cost to uh, one pager. Here we go. One pager. Completed one pager. Um, yeah, I think it was £360,000. Right, here we go. So, Beverly. 2021, yeah, 151000 Um, I can tell you the exact expenses. The exact operating expenses for Beverly um, in 2021 was 18,000 um, pound. And so we netted officially, official profit here, 133,092 pence. That's what we officially netted last year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the, the cost to set up was 360,000 pound at Beverly, but um, let's not forget, though, that I went to the nth degree because they're insulated, they're electric roller shutters, the ply lined inside, they've got lights in every, well, not every single unit, but um, the purpose built, we designed these units ourselves. And um, and so, yeah, it's, so we're, so let's have a look, so 361, 360,000, I'll tell you the exact uh, operating, 133,092 divided by three. Divided by 360. It's a 37% return on investment. Cash on cash return, 37% after after all these years, obviously, um, because you won't get it straight away. Because like I say, you've got to behave differently in lease up as you do maturity. Um, you're cheaper in lease up and then you become more expensive in maturity. So at the minute, we're getting 37% return, cash on cash, for that actual money we put in. But let's not forget, we've got an asset that is cash flowing all the time. And we've got an asset that is worth something as well. So... I, I just, please don't overlook container sites, even established self-storage owners. I know that we have a tendency to look down on container sites and we think that we're, well, there's an element of snobbery and, but a 37% return, it's, it's a fantastic return, but not only a return, it's an asset that's worth something as well. Whatever it's worth, six times multiple, eight times multiple, no, it won't be worth eight times multiple because people frown upon self-storage container sites, don't they? So it won't be worth eight times multiple, but that are between four and six times multiple, I would say, uh, just a <coughs> excuse me as a, a guesstimate because we don't we don't spend any time there, and so maybe maybe four to six times multiple. So whatever you've got an asset there that's worth five hundred at least um, half a million pound, and you've also got cash flow in every single every single year as well um, because we don't need a lot of move ins and move outs to sustain where we are. Right, uh, if you've got any questions at all about container sites. Any questions, and please hit me up, deanbooty at iCloud.com. I can always do extra podcast episodes about any questions you have. Um, I don't know what else I can bring to the table here. Um, by, by the way, in 2027, I do my projections. I've got this one page that tells me turnover, uh, leasing costs, op operating costs, and profit, and then uh, capital expenses uh, for every single one of my facilities. And I've got them done up to 2027. So... So I class it as maturity here. So by 2027, I'll be turning over. And this is just, by the way, just a, 
a 5% increase every single year, 5% increase, compounding 5% increase in turnover. Um, I'll be, I think it's 5%. I'll be, ta I'll be taking over a turnover, £214,415. And that is just 5% compounded increase. And we, we do more than that. We do much more than that. As you can see, over, over the years, we, we definitely do more than that because of our revenue management. We increase prices every nine months, 12%. So yeah, as you can tell, we, we'll do more than that. Um, the operating expenses, the lease costs £18,000. I've got operating expenses. I've increased the operating expenses as well to £10,889 um, just because I, I, I rather overestimate some thinking projections and underestimate it just to make sure that I can... I, I, I underestimate the turnover and I overestimate the expenses because then we know that we're always going to be correct. We're never going to be incorrect or it would take a, a catastrophe to, to be wrong. So, <coughs> excuse me, that means in 2027, we'll be have a net profit of £185,526 from this site, which then would be a return on investment of 51% in 2027 from the initial um, running costs. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got all the figures as well for Clough Road, for Willoughby, for South Shields, well, I'm not doing South Shields at the minute, uh, for Boston. Um, there's, there's some other ones that we're, we're looking at as well that I've got down here. Uh, I, I love it. I love I love my data. Um, and when will be a bit da, a million pound? 2024 was supposed to be an epic da profit of a million pound. That's about depreciation, etc. cetera. Um, uh, depreciation dividends and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited about the future and uh, you guys should be as well. If you're listening to this, then you are still early. You're still one of the early adopters. Self-storage has not fully been adopted in this country yet. Whether you've got a self-storage or you're even listening to this podcast and because you're interested in self-storage, then you are very, very early to the party, my friend. There is still still time to make sure that you can get open um, and uh, just, it's, I don't want to say it, I don't want to get into it too much, but it has, I feel bad if anybody doesn't doesn't have a success of it, but you have a potential to change your life, your family's life, everything. It's just, it's given me a wonderful life. And that's why I love doing this podcast as well, because if just one or two people can get into self-storage because of my passion for self-storage and change their life and change their finances and live a more fulfilled life, spend more time with family, et cetera. Because don't forget in self-storage, there's not a lot of moving parts. You don't have to be great to be profitable in this industry at the minute. Yes, you will have to be better later on, but right now you don't have to be great. And so there's plenty of plenty of wriggle room of, uh, of well, one of my friends call it stupid tax. You can pay stupid tax and still make money. So basically, if you're still if you're stupid in the industry, you, you can you can get away with being stupid because there's, there's so much there's so much bandwidth here. There's so much room um, for profitability that you can you can have stupid tax and still and still do well. Okay, my friends, I feel like I'm just going on here for, for going on sake, as I normally do, as my wife keeps telling me. Um, so I am going to go. We're going to go and see Sonic. Do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's cut it out. <laughs> right, I'm going to go and see Sonic with the kids. All right, my friends, love you, appreciate you, and I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye.